Hey guys, back again with another video. Thanks again for watching. This is Dave here. I wanted to share with you another video that's been on my mind. There's definitely other people who've addressed this topic. Nick Shabazz is one that's coming to mind off the top of my head. What are your favorite lubricants for your knives? Oils, right? So I'll just share a few of them. In the, excuse me, in the other different products that I have set before me to share with you all. One of my favorites is none other than nano oil. Okay, so this is the 85 weight, and it does come in two weights, so the 85 is going to be a little thicker, more viscous. And then you're going to have the 10 weight, which is pretty standard for all of your knife needs. So I normally use the 10 weight. I have used the 85 as well. They both work very, very well. One of my other favorites, which if you haven't already been made aware of the brand, is Gunny Glide. Okay, Gunny Glide works extremely, extremely well. I'm not going to be able to get into all the specifics today, but if you research uh, the maker of Gunny Glide, he will get into all the, the excuse me, all of the different viscosities and weights and all the different details and the science behind Gunny Glide. Now this one also works extremely well and I really do like using Gunny Glide on my Manix 2s, which makes it fire out. Now this one was tuned very well from the factory, but let me tell you, that action and that action, that came from this. It works really well. I like it a lot. This actually was in a, maybe a vanilla. They have different scents that they add, which are kind of neat, a little different, but I do like it. This was in vanilla. They do have like a coffee flavored. They have a variety of other ones I can't think of at the moment, but I did want to share. That's another one of my favorites. Now this one is one, well actually before I forget, let me share with you. I know a lot of people do like KPL, Knife Pivot Lube. Not a fan. I have used it in the past. It does seem to work initially, which I think is the, <laughs> the catch. But after a few cycles, after carrying in my pocket for a little bit, when a little uh, lint or dust seems to get caught in the knife, it just slows it down and it really seems to attract that lint, that pocket lint. And it doesn't work very well. I've noticed it's very inconsistent and I don't think that the quality of it is as good as others, hence the ones you see before you. So just my opinion, your mileage may vary, but I just wanted to share that. <clears throat> I did read a, a lot of different uh, forums on other lubricants and a lot of people use real oil for fishing and there's different types of oil there's remington oil that have been used there's um there's another one by the name is slipping me i apologize but i have tried different lubricants uh, and different real oils and this one actually wasn't too bad now this is discontinued unless you can find it on eBay, this is George. If I can read that properly, hold on. Jerkles, dribbles, sorry, can't remember the name, but it's Whale Spit. I found the name to be absolutely hilarious and I thought it was great. World's best fishing reel oil. Like I said, this is discontinued. I did find that, oh wait, sorry, George Gerks, there it is, Snake River, Hell's Canyon, Soton, Washington, very neat, I mean, there's the information, there's a phone number, maybe it works, I haven't tried it, but as far as I knew, this was discontinued, I bought this aftermarket on eBay, and for the price, it was probably a little more expensive than what it was new, 
but it wasn't any more expensive than buying like the nano oil or something like that. I've used it. It seems to work fairly well. I would say that's definitely another one that I do enjoy, but I do enjoy the nano oil and the gunny glide best so far with what I've tried. Another one I have not tried, but this is a grease. This is um, the monkey grease that's made for or from, I just left it in the package. I honestly, I haven't used it yet. Prometheus Knife Works or Prometheus Design Works, actually. So the gentleman who came out with that, his name is David. Man, I should have wrote down notes, guys, and I apologize. Not very professional here. Doesn't matter. This is on a whim, off the cuff. The gentleman who designs some of America's best made flashlights. You may call them custom flashlights. You may not. But I think his name is David Huey. He's out of California. H-U-I, I believe is how you spell his last name. His website is a great name. www.darksucks.com And look at all of his products. He's got a, an array of amazing products as well as pens and other trinkets and things and that's the monkey grease that he has haven't used it i just wanted to share it but it's something that i think might work well one one other one i don't have set before me i do have is uh, something that has been recommended it's a biodegradable oil it's also by the name of hmm. Frog Lube just came to me. <laughs> Thank you, God. So Frog Lube, yes, that works pretty well as well. I have used that and it wasn't too bad. Now, this is not actually a lubricant, but a spray formula, which helps to prevent rust, EDCI. You've probably seen a lot of people discuss this on YouTube. Works very well, I've noticed. I do spray it on my knives before I use them, or if I'm going to use them for extended use or carry them. It does seem to help. It might not be the best preventative, but it definitely cleans very well, and I do believe it works well for what it is. It, it is a thinner layer of, uh, of lub or lubricant, if you want to call it that, or knife care, the solution, than some. It's not going to be thick like a grease or a wax, but it does work well. Now, something else to just bring up. This is the Super Eraser. I forget where I read about this. This might have been from YouTuber Alchemy underscore one. Really cool guy. Never met him in person, but seems like a very down-to-earth person, and I liked his videos. And he recommended this in regards to cleaning off rust on your knives. And I have used it a little. Probably can't tell, but... Yeah, right there. You might be able to see in the package where some of it's worn off. Anyway, it says it is especially effective for cleaning of ceramic sharpeners, clean ceramic, and porcelain services. However... This was recommended on behalf of getting rid of rust spots on your knife. And I can say that it actually has worked fairly well. So I just wanted to share that to you, excuse me, with you also. And might be something to look into for yourself. These are just a few of the things that I've tried, except for the monkey grease, okay? Everything else, though, I have first-hand experience with. Now, something else I wanted to note, a little bit different, but a lot of you have heard of Rockstead Knives, okay? Rockstead is a production company, same company that is owned by Kai USA, who makes zero tolerance knives as well as Kershaw knives. Now, Rockstead, okay, comes in this amazing packaging. By the way, comes in the best packaging of any 
production and or custom knife maker that I've seen thus far, bar none. So really, really well done presentation. So it comes with this sleeve. I just wanted to take it off so you could see it. It comes with this really beautiful cleaning cloth, okay? And I did open this many times already, but I did want to show you it on camera. Oh, hold on, let me close that back up. Look at, look at how seamless, unless you can't even see where they marked the little X here in a pencil, the seam is practically, well, I mean, you can sort of notice it, but in some areas, it's very hard to notice. Like, I think it's pretty seamless here. You can't even tell. Very well done. Beautiful box, some type of birch wood or something light. Very beautiful. Pop this off. Okay, it has all of the specifications of the knife, the hardness, which Rockstead hardens their knives. Uh, so this is the YXR7 steel, which is a, their own variation of a particular tool steel. They harden it to around 60, let's see if I can just pull it out. Okay, the shin is the model number, there's the model. YXR765.2. So they also use ZDP189, VG10, and 6063. S aluminum is their hard anodized with the Stingray inserts. Now, I gotta say, guys, if you've never handled and or owned a Rockstead, highly recommended. Because not only are they gorgeous, but they perform. I mean... Oh my, do they perform. They are extremely sharp. They come down to about a zero edge. And, I mean, could you ask for a better presentation in a box of a knife? Look at that. DLC. And I mean, I'm telling you guys, one of the sharpest knives out of box ever experienced. It has this beautiful clamshell handle. It is one piece. You can see the seam, but you can't even feel it. If you, yeah, if you take your nail, you could a little bit, but it is exceptional. Jimping. Everything is smooth and pristine. This makes a Sabenza uh, look like a cheaper knife. It's the best way I can put it. It is just so smooth, so flawlessly made. The only downside, oops, sorry, bump the tripod. It does say made in Japan on the clip, which, you know, whatever. But the clip is just your standard spring clip. It's nothing special. I really wish they would have went with a milled clip. But regardless, there's this thing reinsert, which actually feels quite nice. A little slick, but still offered a little texture. Um, yes, it is slick, guys. It is a slick knife. But it's something that is a work of art. And like I said, it blows a lot of knife makers out of the water in regards to performance and their presentation. Now... The word, I should have looked this up before I made the video, that would have been neat. The word shin actually stands for, uh, in Japanese, it stands for a word in English, which is, I should have wrote it down, I apologize, but look it up. It, I think it means trust, actually, if I'm not mistaken. It might mean trust. So, something you can trust your life on, I'd venture to say. I mean, this was an expensive knife. I'm not necessarily going to spine whack this, but if I had to, I would. Like my last video said, our, our knives made for hard use. Folders made for hard use. This is Shin, number 644, as you can tell. Beautifully made, made in Japan. They actually have a, if you're not aware, they actually have a sharpening method where they actually go from, let's say, they start at like maybe 2,000 grit, then they go down to 1,800, then 15, then uh, 12, then 1,000, then 8, then 6. Or excuse me, I think I'm going the opposite way. <laughs> I apologize. I think they go from like 200 grit, then 4, then 6, 8, 
10 progressively up to like 2000 and they come down to a screaming sharp edge which they say will hold its edge for probably two to three years of use but I guess it depends on how often you use your knife and what you use it for but let me tell you they've done extensive tests on this cutting through uh, very thick phone book paper and very thick uh, rope as well. Very fibrous rope, and it has performed flawlessly. And uh, But the edge progression of how they get that edge to where it is with the different grits produces that very keen edge. Now, Rockstead also uses a concave grind, okay? Whereas Spyderco is a flat grind, you know, your Buck 110 is going to be a hollow grind, your Chris Reeves Sabenza is going to be a hollow grind, but the concave, so a concave is more like, like this, so it kind of pushes as it cuts through material, whereas a hollow grind is going to kind of, it's going to cut very well, but it's got more of that, not concave, I'm sorry, the I apologize. The convex grind has more of that obtuse, if I'm remembering right. I apologize. And the flat grind is just going to be like your standard flat grind of, you know, like a kitchen knife going through food. But the convex really performs exceptionally well because it not only is it cutting, it's pushing the material aside. Whereas something might bunch up on a flat grind or, or a chisel grind or something else, the concave... I said concave. I don't think it's concave because concave is more dipped in. It's, it's convex. My apologies. Uh, the convex grind is going to cut by pushing the material away. And it's very effective. I have learned, too, that it, the... For the duration of the time that you have your knife, because you do have to register your knife through the company in Japan. And once you register it, there's spa treatments, there's sharpening services for life, as far as I'm aware. You can, but you do have to just pay for shipping back to Japan. And they'll sharpen it for you once it goes dull. But I mean, for how sharp that it is, you're going to have that for a very long time. This is not your standard, you know, 8CR, 13MOV uh, blade steel. In, uh, in a spider coat tenacious or something like that. And it's not your 420HC by Buck either. But let me tell you, that's exceptional for what they do. That they will sharpen it for you, send it back to you. And I'm telling you, the edge on that will perform very, very well. Last thing, if you were not already aware, if you looked into Rockstead Knives, that the progressive sharpening structure or procedure that they go through, the step process, if it's even off, if somebody, if one of the sharpeners, say, messed up around 600 or 800 grit, they go back to the previous grit, they resharpen it properly on that grit, and then they proceed forward to getting it to the proper edge of their standard. So a lot to be said about their quality and diligence in producing one of the most incredible edges that I've seen on a production knife before, like I said. And even <laughs> head and shoulders over some customs, many customs guys. I'm telling you, their work is outstanding. Their prices are, you know, depending on the model that you get, anywhere between, uh, I'd say, 900 up to 2500 or maybe even over 3000 if you're looking at one of their fixed blades, but their folders, they're, they did recently go up because of many other reasons as to why other knife companies are going up. You can call it inflation, which really is a forced inflation. Don't let anyone tell you different. But because of the materials and cost of goods going up, they've went up as well. But I'm telling you, I still believe they are worth it, and the quality is there. So I believe I'm going to cut it off there. Thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you later on with another video. Thanks again. Take care.